What's up, with us good friends? Happy Wednesday, everybody. Y'all, I am so excited. My mom's on the podcast today, and we are going to recap conference. Honestly, we had so much to talk about in this podcast. I'm redoing this intro because we were going to talk about the later half of this that I mentioned at the very end of this podcast, but we decided to make that a part too, because we had so much to discuss. So I hope you enjoy this podcast as talking about conference. There's so many amazing things and so many cool God stories you're not going to want to miss as you listen. And then next time we are going to talk about cancel culture, a messy conversation about it. So we're going to pick back up uh, in just a minute and do that part two. But right now, enjoy this podcast about conference. Oh my gosh, it was literally incredible. But before I do that, I just wanna make two shout outs. One, all of our merch from conference, which mom and I are ripping right now, is on liveoriginal.com. So it is available to all of you lovely people who are um, team LO and cheering on all that God's doing, but weren't able to actually make it to the conference. You can go actually get your merch now at liveoriginal.com. And also, we already have tickets for next year's conference at losisterconference.com. And y'all, the VIP is already over halfway sold out. Um, We have have a lot of tickets selling, which is amazing. We're so excited, but I'm just saying that to say, if you don't want to miss it, if you already know you are wanting to come and you want to lock that in your calendar, go ahead and get your ticket, reserve your spot, and we cannot wait. Um, this year was just absolutely incredible and blew all of our expectations. It was really cool though, because on Thursday night before we you know, went into the whole conference, we had like a prayer night and I was reading from Acts whenever Peter and John were walking by um, the temple that was called Beautiful Gate. And there was this lame man and he was like asking them for money. And Peter looked at him and he said, silver and gold, we do not have, but I'll give you what I do have. And then he said, Jesus of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And so basically he said, you know, we don't have money, but we have Jesus. And I can give you Jesus and that's all you need to walk. And this man gets up and he starts walking and dancing and jumping out. And then when people see what What's happening? They ask him what's going on, and Peter gets to literally preach the gospel, and then thousands more come to Christ. And that was kind of like our word for the week because I was like, Look, we don't have a lot in Monroe, Louisiana, like silver and gold, we don't have people are coming from all over the world literally to be in this place. And we don't have that, but we do have Jesus, and we'll give you what we got, and that's enough for you to get up and walk. And so, having that word on Thursday night, and then seeing Over 300 people get baptized on Saturday and people just running out and filled with joy and freedom and love and just all things, the fruit of who God is, Mm -hmm. was amazing. Because I was like, yeah, we didn't have a silver and gold. We had Jesus and that's all we needed for this movement to start. It was so Yeah, I was thinking about the name of the um, LA worship is holy in my heart and just that holiness. That's what you felt like in that room. It was holy. Like there was just so many moments that were just like, you just felt chains breaking like all over the room. And from night one, from like the very beginning of the conference, like as soon as it started, it just went from there. After night one was over, we were like, oh my goodness. How? Like, this is just night better? one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember I said this the next day because mom and I were laughing. So my dad has this classic dad joke that he literally says at every restaurant when we order like a bunch of appetizers. He'll because be- we do order yeah, ridiculous do. amount of appetizers. So it's like everyone wants something different. So like then we're like, oh, and, and that too. And the Brussels yeah. sprouts. Just and, keeps the, and the French on. fries. And the <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we end up getting so many appetizers. And like, as soon as we get that return, my dad will be like, all right, where's the check? Like, let's go. We're done. We're done. Like, we got filled on the appetizers. So the next morning I came in and I was, you know, kind of leading each prayer moment before each session. And I was like, you know, last night was so good. And it kind of felt like that. Like, we're done. Like, yeah. we could just go home right now. We're full. Christine came we're full already. Yeah. We're full. Like, worship was incredible. People were spun. We had that, like, literally a thousand people come to the altar. Yeah. Like, it was insane. Yeah. So we're like, we're full. Like, we could stop here. But then I said, but you know what is so true? When you go to a good restaurant, even if the appetizers are amazing and you're full of appetizers, let me tell you what you're not about to stop after the appetizers. You ready for the full course meal? You're ready for that meal. You're excited for that meal. And there's something in that meal that's going to give you actually what you need, you know, like the protein. You're going to get the good side, all that stuff. But then, you know, 
if you go to a good restaurant, you're not just going to stop there even if you're full. You're getting dessert too. And then I talked about how whenever people leave, even if you got full of the appetizers, you're not just still talking about the appetizers. You're talking about the whole meal. You're talking about the yeah. whole experience. You're talking about the service and um, the, the food and just the atmosphere and all of it. And it was so cool because the, that next day it was – the whole meal. It was the dessert. It was the overflow. It was the service. It was the atmosphere. It was amazing. So like nobody was just talking about night one still, you know, you're talking about the the conference as a whole. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow, every part of it was so good. And it wasn't just because a speaker was good or a worship song was good. It was just the whole conference was ministry and it was movement. And our whole theme was move. And I said this in my caption, but the majority of the ministry, I would I would say, didn't even come from the stage. It came from the floor. Like, yeah. it was like on the ground, girls um, putting their arm around another girl, praying for them, people having words for other people, people praying for people, people baptizing people. Like, by yeah. the time baptisms were, I don't think like hardly anybody was in their seat. It was just like... Three, Everyone was moving. Almost yeah. 4,000 people just moving, yeah. like just uh-huh. just involved in what God was doing. And yeah. I was so ministered to in so many ways. Like to put on a conference, I didn't feel like the exhaustion of putting on a conference. I felt no, like the, not the excitement of yeah. being at a conference yeah. you know, because I was so ministered to as well. It was amazing. Yeah. That was a real blessing. It felt like yeah. everyone, even like the whole LO team and yeah. the people who were serving and yeah. volunteering and all that, everyone – felt ministered to. No one felt yeah. like exhausted by it, but energized by it. So that like zeal yeah. of the Lord. And I was thinking about, there's two things people commented to me on that I was like, yes, it's so good. It's like one said, this feels like a family holiday. Like yes. everyone just kind of coming together to like celebrate. And then other people said, this feels like camp. That's and what I said. I, like, And yes. I heard other people say it too. Uh-huh. I was like, this feels like summer camp. It yeah. didn't feel like a conference. It was the stripped back purity of summer camp. And like, the um like the true friendship that was being formed the true vulnerability the mm-hmm. true excitement the the true like repentance and the baptism it wasn't like you're yeah. not just doing that out of hype like right. the word that was preached at night um was pretty straightforward it was yeah. like hey look this is what we're getting ourselves into mm-hmm. there was no like fluff mm-hmm. and every but everyone was just like all in like i yeah. want to give my life to jesus like I'm, I'm all in and like truly making sisters and friends with the people around the room like some of the captions i saw um even from people who have come like two years ago becoming best friends and like coming back together yeah. and like That's just so the good. friendships that were formed were just amazing and I don't know. I just love it. It was so camp and it, it felt like holy ground. Yeah. And you literally had 15 people staying with you. I did. I so, had a house full and it was so fun. It was like summer holiday. It was great. Yeah. It was like a big sleepover and I loved it. I loved every bit of it. It was so fun. Couple On of, Sunday, people were like, the day after, people were like, are you tired? And I was like, I'm really not. I feel so energized by it. But then like 4.30 that afternoon, I was like, I'm oh, good. yeah, you were, you were <laughs> I was tired. Yeah. I called you at like 8.30 at night and you're like, just woke up from a nap. Oh my, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, it was crazy. But there's a couple of uh, cool stories that I want to share. So night one, um, actually before night one, it was Thursday night. My grandma went to the airport to pick up who she was hosting. And there was like um, a girl from Canada that had come. And this was so cool. And if you're listening to this podcast, shout out to you. I didn't get to hug you, but you're awesome. And I've heard your story. But she was coming from Canada. And it was a really crazy series of events. And I won't tell your whole story. But one of the cool things was she had read Ben Stewart's book, Single Day Engaged Married. Oh, okay. And she listened to this podcast and read the book. And she ends up sitting on the plane right beside Donna Stewart. So Aww, already just amazing. Awesome. Donna's awesome. And I just love her so much. And she's married to Ben. So it was really just a cool guy connection well then she gets there and the rental car is like shut down like the rental car company shut down it's like midnight yeah. and uh so she needs we're in Monroe, louisiana yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting a rental car, midnight, a rental car midnight and so she ends up getting there and two mom is there uh my grandma and two mom's like well i can give you a ride which you just gotta love two mama in the minivan that she'll pick up oh, she'll, yeah. she'll pick up a stranger she and will. become friends real fast mm-hmm. so um really cool god story there she ends up staying with two mama they had like a really cool connection it was awesome But in the midst of all the craziness, they ran into three of the girls coming from Puerto Rico, who this was like such a God story and so crazy how they even got here. And um, all the things that happened that night, the details of that story, and I won't tell them because it's not my story to tell, but 
it was just so cool to see how God was already moving before conference even started mm-hmm. in people's hearts. And particularly this one girl um, in Puerto Rico. So she, they get here. I didn't meet them during the conference, but then the night after conference, I went to two mama's house to grab something and they were there. And I was like, what's up? Like we started talking, they listened to the podcast. They, they're telling me their experience at conference. And one of them said, I just want to tell you how cool this is. She said, I wanted to come to conference so bad, but I'm studying abroad next year. And I just felt like this is too much money. Like it's too much money to study abroad and go to conference. I didn't know how I was going to pull up both. So she said, I told God, God, if you want me to do this, like you've given me these two desires, you've got me to do this, then you're going to have to provide for me to go because I want to. Yeah. Well, she works at a hotel right now while she's finishing up school. And she's just trying to make some money. And they have this policy at the hotel. If something's in the lost and found for 60 days and it's not claimed and you're the one that turned it in, then you get what what you turned in. So she doesn't even remember this at all. Like she she remembered putting like a $20 bill in the lost and found. And so when they came to her and they said, hey, there's something for you in lost and found. Uh, she was like, oh, $20. She said, sweet, gas money. So she goes to get it and it's a bag. And she's like... I don't remember putting this bag in there. They're like, oh, well, this is your card. And she pulls out the card and it's her handwriting, her name, her everything. And she's like, oh, yeah, I guess I just forgot because it wasn't of any significance. It was just like a random bag. It wasn't like something she wanted necessarily. So she gets the bag and gets in her car, opens the bag, and there's $650 in the bag. No way. Yeah. So she calls her friend and goes, I'm coming to LO conference. And that's like so, the price of the plane ticket no, or like, something yes, crazy like, like, like that. It was yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Plane ticket, ticket to conference. Mm-hmm. Like, it was everything she needed to come. Just nuts. So she said, I'm just so glad I got to come and be a part. And then they said, next year, we are bringing back a group of people from Puerto Rico. Like, we wow. have to. Like, we want them to be here. And it was just so cool. Because, yeah. again, silver and gold, we don't have. But we'll give you what you have, Jesus. But the fact that God made a way for her to come was, like, so encouraging to me. Because yeah. I was like, God, like, as we're preparing and we're planning this conference, you're preparing the hearts of who's coming. Like, six months before when she turned in that, or 60 days before when she turned in that bag at the like yeah. perfect day to find wow. it 60 days later when she needed the money with the exact amount like it was just so cool so stories like that even That's before awesome. conference and then stories at conference where uh there's this one woman she was locally in town and um miss tara y'all know miss tara she's on recently my counselor who spoke at conference miss tara's like prepping for conference and she was reading her bible out in town one day and this woman comes up and she says what's in the word today and she um, has like a lot of tattoos and the the tattoos were a little bit intimidating. They were like gang tattoos and stuff. And she starts talking to Miss Tara and Miss Tara tells her what she's reading. She said, I'm prepping for a low conference. And uh, she said, do you want to come? And the woman was like, like, yes, I'd love to come, which is really cool because she was, um, l- she was probably, you know, 40 or so mm-hmm. and um, just didn't necessarily look like the main target for LO conference that you did, you wouldn't know she'd be super excited to come. But turns out at her story, she had just moved down here because she comes from a really rough background and heard that this area is like the Bible Belt and wow. wanted to be around people who knew Jesus. That's literally why she moved here. So she has wow. like a drug background, um, really rough stuff, but she moved here to get away from it all because wow. she wanted to be around people who know God. So Ms. Tara invited her to conference. She comes to conference, then decides to get baptized night two. And uh, as she goes to get baptized, she asks Ms. Tara to baptize her. She gets baptized. Her whole life changed. The story that she told and the details of her story is just wow. absolutely crazy. And then uh, they saw That's her amazing. the next day. Uh-huh. And she told them that she went to McDonald's after the conference to go tell people about Jesus. She's like, I'm just telling everyone wow. about Jesus. And she said she almost was about to quit her job because she was embarrassed by her past. And people were like making fun of her. And she said, but I'm not going to do that anymore because I want people to see what God's done in me. Whoa. And to be a testimony of faith. Yeah. Wow. I mean, just That's the coolest insane. thing. Y'all, grocery store shopping can be a little stressful. Christian does not like to grocery store shop. He always feels like it's so stressful and it can be a little overwhelming. I don't really mind it, but also just don't really have time for it a lot of times. And I know some of y'all, you might have a love-hate relationship with the grocery store like we do, and that's why we love Hungry Root. Hungry Root is the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality groceries delivered to your door. I love getting what I need delivered right to me, and groceries are no exception. Hungry Root has healthy groceries and simple meals 
meal ideas all in the same place. So no more walking through the store wondering what you should cook. Hungry Root makes it so easy. All you have to do is take a fun short quiz that lets Hungry Root get um, to know your tastes, your habits, and your goals. They keep in mind all of your answers while they suggest groceries that they think you'll love and will fit your needs and your goals. You can take their suggestions or you can choose anything you want. You can pick from all sorts of amazing tasty options like fresh produce, high quality meats or seafood, pantry staples, snacks, sweets, and more. They even have seasonal favorites for the fall that will keep you coming back for more. We personally love this. The first time we used Hungry Root, we let it pick for us. And it was so fun because we got all these different things that we hadn't tried before. And now those are on our repeats. We also got some great meals, some steak tacos that Christian said were his favorite steak tacos ever. So that's a big deal. But the snacks are probably my favorite because they're healthy, they're yummy, and they have so many different fun options that I actually had never heard of or seen in our local grocery store. I hate it when groceries get forgotten and pushed to the back of the fridge, which is so annoying. But Hungry Root has thousands thousands of easy ideas that will put those groceries to good use before you get them lost in your fridge. Everything Hungry Root offers follows one simple standard. It's gotta taste good, be quick to make, and contain trusted and whole ingredients. And it's as easy as that, friends. Hungry Root will have you spending less time shopping and cooking and more time enjoying foods that you love. Right now, Hungry Root is offering my listeners 30% off your first delivery and free veggies for life. That is not a small offer, y'all, so don't miss this. Just go to hungryroot.com slash woe to get 30% off your first delivery and get your free veggies today. That's hungryroot.com slash woe. Don't forget to use our link so that they know we sent you there. Well, that reminds me of Phil and Phil and Kay's yes. story and the blinds coming out September 28th. Yeah. So that's soon, very soon. And I was just telling somebody about that's how Phil and Kay ended up here, really, yeah. because Phil needed to get away from his friends and the people that were the bad influences on his life. And he, when he turned his life around and gave it to Jesus, that's, well, first he kicked Kay out of the house yeah. and she came here because of the church here and the yeah. church is what took care of her while they were separated, while she was a single mom of three little boys. And then Phil comes here after he, when he turns his life around and they really, for that same reason, because of the church and to yeah. just kind of like be around godly influence yeah. and away from the influence that was, you know, taking them down the dark yeah. path. So, so cool. Same thing. That's that so is cool. amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was just so cool to see so many different people's lives change. Like yeah. moms and daughters got baptized together. Grandmas and granddaughters got baptized yes. together. I heard um, women who came by themselves, like her got baptized. Yeah. Uh, and then even like people ministered to like the cops that were there, the security. Mm -hmm. It's the security guard that stopped Christian. And well, and uh, you said the cops. I had a picture. Someone sent me a picture of one of the cops just like hands up in full worship. It was just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a picture of the prayer team praying over two cops. Like, I mean, it, this is what's cool about God. We step into an atmosphere like that. And when it truly is God, like everyone's touched, like yeah. everyone's uh -huh. moved. And so even the people who didn't, even expect it or look for it, just felt it. And um, there was a security guard who uh, stopped Christian on the way in because he didn't have his <laughs> VIP pass. And Christian was like trying to look all cool, not wear his VIP pass, we should go walk on in there. And the security guard stops and she's like, uh, you can't come in here, you need your pass. And he was like, oh, okay. He's like, um, I'm not trying to like be, you know, whatever, but do you know who I am? <laughs> and, do you know who I, I am? <laughs> and she's like, no, and I don't care. And so then Christian goes, okay, yeah, nope, cool. Like I respect it. And he was like, but I mean, if it does make a difference, like I am Sadie's husband. And then she was like, I don't care. And she was like, I, I was told even if Sadie herself walks in here without a pass, not to let her in, which is true. We, we did yeah, say we that. Good we good security. We well, tight security. Yes. And he was, okay, nope, I love it. I love it because I'm sure Sadie did tell you that because that's true. And so he waits, someone brings him a VIP pass. So he gets the VIP pass, goes, sits down. Well, the next night before it was all over, she comes up to him and she says, I just want to tell you my story. She tells um, her uh, she tells him her name and she goes into her story and basically not to get the details of her story, but on night one, she came and she was just, you know, being security, didn't know what this was for. And she like hates God, like does not, not a Christian, does not like God, super mad about the circumstances of her life. And she was like so mad that she had to come and do this because she just wanted the money, but she didn't know what it was for. And she was like, okay, I'm not going back tomorrow night. This is horrible. You know, this was a mistake. I should not be here. Well, then something in her the next morning was like, 
you need to go back, you know? So she was security for the next day. Of course, we didn't know any of this. And um, Mama Joe was sitting beside her, my great grandma. And Mama Joe said the whole entire baptism stuff, she was just bawling. Like she was wow. just so moved. So she comes up to Christian after baptisms and tells him her story and said, um, this is where I'm at. She said, I'm so glad I came back mm-hmm. tonight. And she said, but I just want you to be praying for me and told wow. told him her name. And so we've been thinking about her a lot. But just it was just really powerful because, you know, of course, like the girls who came were yeah. so ministered to. And like yeah. all those girls got baptized and it was amazing. There's so much freedom. It was mm-hmm. beautiful. But then like for the security guards and like the random woman who Miss Harris saw the day of conference was yeah. just like, come, like all those things God had in mind before before we yeah. set this conference in motion, you know, yeah, like immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine. More. Like we're praying yeah. for each of the names. And, you know, I love we the whole LO team. We passed out the names before I prayed for H's. And mm-hmm. so Hannah's and Haley's, I prayed for you. And so like we prayed for those specific names of people that had bought tickets, but then also for whatever else God might yeah. do, the immeasurably more, the, all the other things he might do that we yeah. didn't even dream or yeah. imagine. I and love people that. are like, how was conference? I'm like, how do you even say it? I know. Like, it just, yeah. it was just, it, yeah. it was heavenly. It was holy. It was. it was beyond something that you can just describe or explain. It was just so good. And yeah. it was so cool because after that, we saw um, at Auburn University, there was like all these baptisms. Yes. Which was amazing. It was and like just like three days later. Yeah, three days later, so cool. it just felt like revival just started just like mm-hmm. sweeping. And it was so cool because I was watching an interview because it was on like Fox News and there are people talking about it. And they're like, it was just the craziest thing. It was just like so spontaneous and such freedom and such purity and joy. And like, and I was like, those, those are everything we experienced. Yeah, like yeah. it was, that's exactly what we experienced in that room. It was like mm-hmm. so much freedom and joy and like just, um, it was like time didn't exist. You know, yeah. I was like, you weren't uh-huh. thinking like, oh, how much longer like yeah the worship teams and singing 30 songs like whatever yeah. like you're just like in it you know yeah. and and um, everyone cheered for everyone every cheered single for one every person like, like the every person. celebration yeah. was just like beautiful and everyone's like crying and it was just amazing yeah so hearing what happened there being the same that happened here is like same God, yeah, you know, same story, so and it's the yeah. same. You know, if you go to your church Sunday and that happens. You know, it's the same God, and so it was so yeah. cool. Um, you should tell about Carrie and Jen's part because that was just oh so mm-hmm. good. Oh my gosh, I heard a lot of people comment. Okay, so too. then I can tell my personal story from conference that was really cool for me. So Carrie and Jen Johnson, we had um, a like section in the middle of the day where a session where they just sang over all the girls instead of like leading them in worship they worshiped over everybody and the intent was that they would worship and just full freedom just whatever they hear whatever they feel just like sing over the girls and let everyone in the room just kind of have a time with god it was we we call it like the prayer closet moment like this is your moment for like you and the lord like forget that they're almost 4,000 people here and like you and god god what do you have for me what are you speaking to me what is what what's your goal here you know And just to get really in tune with that. And so, which was amazing because I said, you know, this is what we hope you do after conference, but we know life gets busy. And I want you to see like the importance of it. So let's do it here so that we can help steward that. And then later, like go do this by yourself. Because I talked about how um, I was really recreating my own prayer closet moment because back when I was on tour, I would go get in this like shower, not like I would literally be fully dressed, like get in a shower (laughs) in the arena that whatever arena we were in that day. And I would turn on Carrie Job, speak to me. And I would just like get with the Lord, like speak to me, God, speak to me. So I was trying to recreate that moment where like literally Carrie Job is there yeah. and Jen Johnson and they're singing over you and you're just asking God to speak. And so seeing the ministry happen in that moment, seeing yeah. the movement in the room, like what God was doing was just really beautiful. But then even for me, I was like, okay, God, speak to me. Like, what do you have for me? And I had this really cool moment where I was asking God, like, God, you know, here I am doing full-time ministry, but like, I need you to tell me that you got my kids, you know, because a lot of people who do full-time ministry, it's just really hard because, you know, that you're busy. It's just yeah. like any working parent and you just want to know that your kids are going to be taken care of they're going to be okay that they're gonna i was like i just want them to love you like i love you i just want them to know you like i know you i don't want them to ever you know go astray because because i was not there because of yeah. ministry or whatever uh-huh. so having this honest moment with god and i felt like the lord just like showed me that 
how he introduced himself to all the people in the Old Testament. Like, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I always noticed that, that he always would come and he would say, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I realized like, God is the God of generations. Like he is the God of my kids. He is the God of Abraham. He is the God of Isaac. He is the God of Jacob. Yeah. So he can be the God of, you know, it, we go back, Betty Jo, Chris, <laughs> Corey, Sadie. Honey, yeah. Haven, like he's the God of generations. So I had this really cool moment. So I write it down. Then fast forward to the baptisms later that night and every ministry again, just happening all around the room. And um, this girl comes up to me and she's like, Sadie, like, I just felt like the Lord told me to come over here and tell you. She said, I'm a working mom. She said, I actually in full-time ministry. I have four kids. It was something crazy, like three kids under four or four. It was like a lot of kids <laughs> under the age of four. And she said, um, and I just want to tell you that God told me to come over here and tell you that he's got your kids, mm-hmm. which is so crazy because I wrote down three times that day, I, I have your kids, I have your kids, I have your kids. Wow. And she said, he's got your kids. And she said, he's going to bless you. He's going to bless them. He hasn't. He. She went on to say this like whole thing about what God told her to tell me about having my kids, Whoa. which is exactly what I felt like God already told me. Yeah. But then uh-huh. to like affirm that through a person yes. and really enforce uh-huh. that through a person i was like that was insane yes. but it was just so cool because that's, that's just so my story like right. imagine what happened in everybody's heart in that yes. moment i'll never know we'll never know yeah um but i think that was a cool moment like because mm-hmm. god went from being like god to everybody uh-huh. it's like god to you and yeah. i think that's what's cool about god like he is the god of the universe but he's also your father and your friend yeah and um mm-hmm. that's been something that's always just been like profound to me that's how are you so good. like the god of everyone and my father right you know? uh-huh. it's really and cool. also personal it's like the the bigness and largeness of god and who he is and yeah. how minute we can yeah. feel in the face of like creation and all yeah. the bigness but then also how but personal he, he is for just that unique yeah. yeah and he spoke to each of us and yes. yeah there were things in that moment too i didn't have a, a pen and paper i looked over at you and i saw you like writing i was, I was like shoot so i need fast. i needed to bring a journal in here um for that time but it was yes it was so powerful for me as well i remember well that morning Don Cherie had spoken about um, the potter and the clay and how in that time, whenever God is like molding us and shaping us, there's a pressing that mm-hmm. is involved in that. And we have been praying through some stuff over the last couple of months. And I remember when I, I when she was talked about that, I was like, oh, this is the pressing because he's molding us into he's molding me into something different and something that he has in mind and so i felt that pressing and in that that prayer time it just was a really good confirmation of like oh what he's doing yeah in my life and i had people speak things that were yes. i was praying about directly that was crazy. you had some, crazy, had some ones. crazy ones that god was saying to me and just like some fears that i was having and some worries that i was holding on to that god just said like oh no i'm gonna tell you this directly so you yeah. don't even have to worry you know i've yeah. got this like you know you know i'm in this so clearly and a lot of it came through that that specific prayer time yeah, yeah. So this is very exciting. Haven is almost three months old and we were playing with our little KiwiCo set that we got the other day and she was looking at herself in the mirror and she literally rolled over y'all. I was so excited. She is just growing up so fast and Chris and I are loving every stage of it and that's why we love KiwiCo. It's an incredible subscription for kids that encourages brain building through playing and exploring, which is so awesome and so great to just get to watch them explore and look at these things even when they're as little as Haven is. KiwiCo's Panda Crate is designed specifically for newborns and toddlers like my kids to help support the crazy fast growth and development that they go through in the first two years of their life. Each crate has up to six products and everything in the Panda Crate is backed by experts and made with high quality non-toxic materials. All we have to do as parents is sit there and enjoy bonding with our kids and watching them learn and grow. Um, Plus, the toys and activities in the Panda Crate will encourage up to 10 different skills for your baby from developing cognitive uh, skills to find motor control. Babies don't stay babies forever, y'all. We know that. So it's very important to give them support as they grow and as they thrive. So we were sitting there, like I mentioned, with the little mirror thing that they have. It's like a really cute toy. And I had her on her tummy with doing a little tummy time. And I held the panda off to the side because, you know, they love the black and white. So Haven looks over. I'm like, look at the panda. Look at the panda. And when she looked over, she just rolled over and it was so cute. And then she did it again. And so um, super sweet to see her playing 
playing with things and starting to learn new tricks. So fostering brain building play with KiwiCo is awesome. You definitely want to check that out. And also have a deal for y'all right now. You can get 50% off your first month. That is no small thing, friends. Plus free shipping at KiwiCo.com with the promo code Sadie Rob. So that's 50% off your first month plus free shipping at KiwiCo, K-I-W-I-C-O.com with the promo code Sadie Rob. That's KiwiCo.com, promo code Sadie Rob. Which is so cool. We knew we were like, this is probably going to be the best moment of conference because we're just letting God move. Like yeah. everyone's getting out of the way and just like God do your thing. And then that's the time that we go back to and we're like, whoa, that was yeah. so cool. Yeah. Those are the things people are going to hold on to forever because we we're recreating a moment almost that I had at 17 where I was at a conference with 3,000 people and God became super personal to me. And at 17, I felt like the Lord, you know, tell me I'm not calling you to be famous. I'm calling you to be a sister and a friend of those who don't have one. Yeah. And and this is the first day I wrote my journal, Live Original Live Events. Well, here I am, you know, almost 10 years later from that moment. And I'm on a podcast called Sisters of Friends because that's <laughs> I took the word really seriously. And we're talking about LO Live Events. So I was like, man, if, if you just get a word, you know, if you just feel and you don't have to have a, a word, you have right. the word, you know. Yes. But if you get a word and you hold on to that word and you take him at his word mm-hmm. and you go with it like oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm 10 years in and I still am just getting started with like yeah. that word, you know? And so I just feel like I wanted people to hear from him, mm-hmm. to listen to him, to get that word from him or, or anchor themselves in the word because that will change the trajectory of your life, you yeah. know? And so, yeah. I, and I think it, it was that for a lot of people. I think so too. And I think we should encourage people who you might be in that moment where you're looking around like everyone else is getting a word, everyone yes. else is hearing something and I'm just not. And that, and that happens. And there's so many all, times. We've all been there. Yep. Yeah, it happens because, you know, there's, God's timing is perfect and he moves in different times in different ways. And so, yeah, don't don't be discouraged by that because like God is with you. He yeah. is he is for you. He is in every single moment that you're in. It just may be there's another time that's going to be the time that he's going to speak something directly to you. And this is the time that you're just supposed to just be quiet just and be, just be there. Just yeah, I remember during like the COVID season, I wanted God to speak to me so bad. And I just felt like radio silence. And I told my team that. I was like, I'm just getting radio silence here. And I just like kept showing up at sunrise and sunset because I was like, God, I'm I like, I'm going to position myself to hear. And I never heard anything. And honestly, during that whole time, I didn't like hear something specific. But like, what do you do when you don't hear? You go back to what he last said, you know? So like, yeah. um, there hasn't been like many words since I was 17 that I've heard like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I heard it then. I'm just going to keep following it and keep being obedient to it. Then you get, you know, little things like at conference that was really cool and powerful that I felt like God said that. And then that girl affirmed it. And there are moments like that through your faith wall. But that's not an everyday thing necessarily. You know, that can come years in between, but just consistently being with God. And I, I told a story about honey, like how honey will cry out to me in her naps. And I don't always go and get her because it's not time to go get her. I know that what's actually best for her is if I don't go get her and I let her stay in that moment of silence so that she can get the rest that she needs. If I would just go get her, then I wouldn't be letting her, you know, gain the strength that she needs during the nap. And so I feel like sometimes that's God with us. It's like, it's not that he doesn't hear you and it's not that he's not wanting to respond, but even like his response is not intervening yet you know yeah. like he's uh-huh. with you he's mm-hmm. there but like you need to be in that moment for a minute and so i think that that's true for us too like sometimes when we're not hearing him doesn't mean he's not there not listening it's just like maybe his response is letting you just be you yeah. know because yeah. there's a reason for that so this was really cool about conference too is that like we we say this at team all the time like you know, we get to set the table, but like God's going to bring the meal. Like we get to go and we get to put this on, which is amazing, but it's not our job to do what's actually going to happen at conference. Like that's the Lord's job, yeah. which is so cool. Cause then there's no pressure in that. Cause I always say there's no pressure in calling and setting a reservation. There's no pressure in setting the table. The, uh-huh. the pressure's in the meal, you know? Um, but it's like the best thing ever to get to like call and make a reservation to a place that you know, the meal's going to be good at. You're like, Oh, I can't yeah. wait to bring my friends. So that's kind of how I feel like putting on conference. Back to the meal reference. I feel like we we have a lot of meal references like in our food. family. Yeah, we like food, but you know? actually, there's a lot of meal references in the Bible. There like 
sure. There's a lot of feast That's so true. And feasting and all that. That's so true. Yeah. So we were prepared at the table. God brings the meal. And it was so cool because we really got to see that in a lot of different ways. But one way that was really cool was me and Christine and Don Cherie, like we didn't talk about our messages before. Mm-hmm. Um, we just were like, you know what, God, this is, I just told them, you know, the theme is movement. Yeah. If you want to go along with that, great. If you don't, whatever the Lord speaks to you. So we didn't talk about it at all. So Christine gets up there night one and she just starts preaching and she starts saying stuff that when I tell you, it is exactly what I had prepared for Mm -hmm. night two. It was about not getting stuck and not looking back, which was my message, not getting stuck and not looking back. And I was like, this is so cool because I think- But from a whole different context. But a whole different context. A whole different part of scripture. A whole different part of scripture. But- this a similar like theme yeah yes. we're like oh clearly God we need to hear this, this. god's yeah. in this like this is something we need to hear and as I, a people yes and i heard uh alex Seely say one time if god repeats himself you better be listening yes. so that's how i started my message night too i was like if god has repeated himself you better be <laughs> listening and let me just tell you i'm about to talk about being stuck and everyone was like oh like yeah. you could hear like uh-huh. the audible like whoa because we just heard that last yes. night but it was in a, a different context a different spin on it the, the word that God told me to share, but the whole thing, I mean, even um, Don Cherie talking about how that there's like purpose in the pressure and not all yeah. pressure is bad pressure, uh-huh. which is what I was talking about. Right. But like yes. not all the time when God's silent, does that mean it's a bad thing? Yeah. Not every time when you feel stuck, does that mean you're in the wrong place? Like right. you might be at the right place at the right time and it doesn't feel good. Right. And that's a hard thing to swallow, but yeah. that can be true. And um, it's crazy that like Don Cherie said that, Christine said that, and then I reinforced that. And yeah. I was thinking about the woman, the security guard, you mm-hmm. know, that 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 is her story. Right. And it, it's like, oh, wow, like maybe me being where I'm at, even if it doesn't feel good. It feels uncomfortable. It feels uncomfortable. Feel stuck, I feel stuck. You feel like you don't know. Feel the pressure mm-hmm. is actually, that doesn't mean God's absent. Yeah. That just means like maybe God's working something in me. Yeah. Maybe I'm positioned for God's glory to be revealed in my life. Healthy habits can be hard to stick to, and y'all know the Huff fam, we try to stay healthy, we try to stay active, but it can be hard when you're so busy. We all go through seasons in our lives. Some are easy and some are difficult, but no matter what season you're in, AG1 is there to help our family make at least one simple healthy choice every day. AG1 is an all-in-one nutritional supplement that fits right into any lifestyle because it's all there in one scoop. You just add to a cold glass of water, which is so convenient. We gave AG1 a try because it has 75 high quality vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source ingredients in every scoop. Christian immediately notices a boost in his energy and focus whenever he takes AG1. And also AG1 actually even helps you sleep better at night, which is such a gift. It also can give your skin a healthy glowy look. And um, just as vitamins always do, and especially getting that many in just one scoop, Christian and I both love that AG1 supports gut health as well, because we all know that if your gut is healthy, it helps your mind to be healthy, your mental health. So huge fans of AG1. Christian has gotten so many different people on AG1 as well by just talking about it, sharing about it. It's just such a good thing for our body. He also really enjoys the taste of it, which is so nice because taking 75 vitamins would be really hard to do, but to do it in one tasty scoop is so nice. Uh, We travel a lot, so it's awesome that AG1 has travel packs. I have them right here. They're super easy to just throw in your bag and never you never have to forget to take your AG1 to take your vitamins and get you a little extra boost on the road. Um, also, I love that AG1 has vitamin D3 plus K2 drops. Y'all know I'm a big fan of vitamin D. It's always helped me feel so much better. It's made my skin better, my heart, teeth, bones, everything better. And uh, I can just put a few drops of this in my food or drink every day, and I'm all covered on those bases. Plus, in this bottle that AG1 has, it has over 600 servings, so you know that you're going to be good for a long time. So if you're looking for a simpler, effective investment for your health, try AG1 and get five free AG1 travel packs and a free one year supply of vitamin D with your first purchase. Just go to drinkag1.com slash woe. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash woe to check it out today. 
you know, I think about the lady that Miss Tara about does. She literally said, she said, this would be the moment in my life that I would typically run, but I'm going to stay because I realize I'm not stuck. I'm positioned for God's glory. Yeah. And so seeing that word just change people's perspective was very, very cool because um, even, you know, I had notes and stuff and then I just ditched them. And what came out of my mouth that I didn't prepare was like, so the Lord, like yeah. Christian after he goes, when did you like mm-hmm. think about that verse and that verse? I was like, right before, I, yeah, like uh-huh. right before I felt like yeah. the Lord was like, go read this, go read that. And I said that. And it was like those things that I felt like really spoke directly to people's hearts. Yeah. So it was very, very cool to let God bring the meal and just set the table. And I felt like profoundly different than most conferences that, I, that I've gone to, not because uh, this conference was because of the p- way I positioned myself to come. Because I think I do put pressure on myself a lot of times to like, you know, have like the perfect message or prepare yeah. in the perfect way. Like I always want to be so over prepared. But this time, I was the most chill I have ever you were. been. People were mm-hmm. like, are you okay? Like, cause I was just like, I was like about speaking. I was sitting on the ground, like yeah. legs crossed, like ready to worship before uh-huh. I was praying with people. I was eating at every meal with everybody. I wasn't like hiding in the back. I wasn't like, yeah. oh, I was just, cause I really was like, no, like I know God is going to do his thing. Yeah. And I just need to show up. And that didn't mean I didn't prepare. Right. I, I prayed so yeah. much. I had a word that I felt very confident in that I had worked You've on. You prepared for months. I prepared months, for but, months. Uh-huh. But when I got there, yeah. I didn't prepare with pressure. I prepared to yeah. then go, okay, God, it's yeah. all you, you know? Yeah. And um, it was like really cool for, well, for me to get to see Kristen that. Kristen Kane, because I heard uh, there were a couple of people in the room that had heard Kristen Kane do that message or a similar message before, but they were like, We've heard her kind of say that before, but it was totally, totally different, different tonight. Like, cause God just like moved in the room. And when she came off, you could visibly tell yeah. that like, she was like, whoa, there's something, the spirit was she moving went in here tonight. From yeah. scripture to scripture she to did. scripture to scripture without looking at one note, without yes. opening the, I mean, it was just like word after word after word. And then she came out, she's like, I just, it just kept coming out. Yeah. Like it was so active. It was so alive. It just was like crazy. And that's how I felt. Like I, um, I said, you know, it was during breakout sessions, which breakout sessions were amazing. Oh my gosh. I've heard so much from the breakout sessions, but I sat in the back during breakout sessions to just be with the Lord, which was crazy. Cause I was the only person in that green room that did not happen the whole weekend. And I happened to be wow. the only person there. Yeah. So I was like, okay, thank you, Lord. And I just had this like download of the rest of my sermon, like the parts that I said I ended up adding. And it was just so good. And before conference, I told God, like, I was like, give me a love for these people that you have, you know, like help me love them. Like you love them. You know them better than I do. Tell me what you need them to hear. And I felt like he did, you know, like yeah. I, I wanted to say those things out of like the love that I knew God had for them. Like, let me give you this gift of like freedom. Let me give you this gift of salvation. Let me give you this gift of actually washing off the old self and becoming a new self. Let me give you this gift of removing a heart of stone and giving you a heart of flesh. Like uh-huh. it was like, I had to give you the gift of these words that God's that God actually said that that are true, yeah. you know, and um, that was really cool. So from a person coming to conference side, like I got to experience because I just came and received mm-hmm. from everybody else, I was super impacted. But from a person leading conference, I was super impacted because of how much God led me in the yeah. whole thing. And mm-hmm. so to people listening, like coming to conference with an expectation that God's going to move is a beautiful thing. But also if you are a leader of conferences, if you are a church leader, coming to those places as well as a person to receive what God's going to do and as a tool to be used by God in such a way that you would just want to love people like He loves them in that room. And I I just feel like sometimes we come with all this pressure on ourselves. We come Mm -hmm. with all this. And someone actually asked me like, is there like a behind the scenes going on? I'm not saying like, are you like actually (laughs) super stressed out? And I was like, actually like, no. Um, And I think that's because of the preparation we had before. And um a couple of weeks before conference, we had this like team gathering and we literally just spent an hour repenting of things that we were making more of a deal than God. Like yeah. we were like, okay, this is That's what good. I'm working on too much. And yes, I need to work on it because this is my job. And if right. this does, mm-hmm. and if I don't do this, conference will not happen. Yeah. But like, I am thinking about this more than I'm thinking about what God's going to do in the room. Yeah. So we just like repented of it. We gave it to the Lord. We said, God, like you have these stressors. We just asked that your hand would be on it. And I think that was a big thing for our team too. Because two weeks before, we unloaded our burdens on God. We unloaded yeah. the stress. That didn't mean we still didn't have to work our butts off and right. do many things. But it yeah. was like, 
this is actually nothing compared to what you're going to do in the lives of the people coming. Right. So we're going to do the best we can to get all the food trucks there on time. But if they're not on time, it's pales in comparison to what's really important and how you're going right. to move. And I think that's why our team came in and we weren't stressed and we weren't freaking out and we that's were good. able to just like be. And that's how Steph, who was literally running the conference logistically, was baptizing people and yeah. Court, who was set up every single thing like merch and beauty and design was baptizing people and it was just like everything stops for the main thing yeah. which was really what cool. was really important was the centerpiece of the whole thing yeah of the meal was was the centerpiece of the meal it wasn't like all the little details of where the how the napkins were laid or whatever which all of that was beautifully done and was you know was just so nice and make, makes everyone feel so welcome but that wasn't the main the main yeah. course the main course yeah. stayed the main course the main course leave alaska said a steak dinner is great on the ground, but it is so much be better when a table is set. And so <laughs> we said, look, the steak's going to be good no matter what. It's going to yeah. be good on the ground. It's going to be good on the table. But let's set a table because it's so table. much better <laughs> when it's set and you feel so loved and so special. Yeah. And so we're going to set the table, but steak's the real important thing. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. But anyways, it was so good. So we're going to do another podcast after this because after we went from conference, Christian and I took our girls to Disney World, which was so fun and so amazing. And we're going to pick up up at the next um, podcast talking about that because it was a little bit crazy. I went from conference to Disney World, which to me was fine. We had the most amazing time. It was the best trip ever with our family. It was like so intentional, so special to see Honey just have like all in wonder in her eyes and all the different things. But Instagram thought differently. Instagram <laughs> came at me and it was crazy because on at the beginning of the week, I post about conference and all these people getting baptized and how amazing and how special and all the things that God did. And of course, I got unfollowed by a lot of people for that because I'm posting about baptism and like very specific Christian things. And so, you know, kind of expect it. Then at the end of the week, I post about Disney and how awesome Disney World was with my family. And I talked about quality time. And then I get unfollowed by a bunch of people because now I've gone woke and I'm no <laughs> longer a Christian and I've gone out the deep end. And how could I lead my family in this way? And I just thought, this is so crazy. In one week, I'm unfollowed by people for being too Christian and I'm followed by people for being too woke. And so we want to do a conversation, a messy conversation about cancel culture. And so we are going to do that in the next episode. So tune in because you're not going to want to miss it. We're going to dive into the scripture on maybe how Jesus would respond to a time like this. So I hope that you guys enjoyed listening to, about conference. Uh, like I said, tickets are already on sale for next year. LSSerConference.com. You can get your ticket. Um, like I said, tickets are already going pretty fast, which is such a blessing and so amazing. We're so excited, but we want you to be in the room and we just believe that God's already preparing a way for you to be there and so if you need to believe for the money we're believing with you um, if you're able to go ahead and lock that in we celebrate that and are so excited this is early bird pricing right now and it's the cheapest you'll be able to get your ticket um, ever so if you want to get it now get it now and you can also join us in getting the merch at um, LO actually at liveoriginal.com so go check it all out we love you guys and hope that you're so encouraged by this <laughs>